Today we're diving into why Big Sean's sixth studio album, Better Me Than You, first week album sales are so low and what he can do to bounce back. Sean's been a major force in hip hop with Grammy nominations, multi-platinum album releases like Dark Sky Paradise and I Decided, and his 2020 album Detroit 2 debuted at number one on Billboard 200. Yet he's gone from 100,000 first week album sales to just 20,000, which is what Ice Spice sold on her first debut. This is shocking. So what went wrong and how can he reclaim his spot at the top? Let's get into it. So number one, lack of crew or strong affiliation. So when you think about it, who is Big Sean's team? After splitting with Kanye West, who even calls Sean his biggest failure. Well, the you the worst shot. thing I've ever done was sign Big Sean. The worst. It's, it's, it's worse. Sean doesn't have the backing of a solid team like other top artists. 50 Cent had G-Unit, J. Cole has Dreamville, Kendrick Lamar has Black Hippie, and Drake has OVO. He's even done collaborative projects with other major artists. This kind of support gives artists social validation, which boosts their image in the eyes of fans. And in psychology, this is called social proof. Basically, the theory of social proof states that when we're unsure of how to behave in a situation, we'll often look at what others are doing and behave in the same way. Because at our core, we humans are social creatures, and a long time ago, our ancestors figured out that we'll make fewer mistakes doing the same thing as everyone else over doing something different. It's one of the reasons why going against the flow is uncomfortable in the large majority of people. It's just encoded in our DNA. People are wired to trust those who have the backing of a strong network. If you're surrounded by a solid group, people just assume that you're valuable. It's not about whether Big Sean's music is good. If you listen to the album, you will like the album. He's figured out how to package clarity, mental health, and spirituality into music without it sounding corny. And so it's really about perception. And right now, he's giving Wolverine the lone wolf vibe. And that's hurting his image. Number two, missing opportunity with this relationship. As you know, Big Sean is in a high profile relationship with Janae Aiko, but he hasn't leveraged it in the way that Jay-Z and Beyonce has. And a long list of celebrity couples from Ben and J-Lo, Kim and Ye, Ashanti and Nelly, Russell Westbrook and Sierra, even Megan Good and Jonathan Majors. And the list goes on. He could do a joint project with Janae, like an album and a documentary showing their lives as musicians and parents. And that could build an emotional connection with his fan base. A lot of people don't even know they did a project in the past called 2088. It was those last couple songs that led us to make our um, 2088 project, which is one of, my, one of my favorites. It's a fan favorite. People still asking for part two to this day. You know what I'm saying? They could do a 2088 part two with the tour and even have Jay-Z and Beyonce come out. People love seeing successful couples. It adds a layer of vulnerability and humanity to the artist's brand. And him integrating his family into his marketing would show leadership and relatability. But right now, Sean's brand lacks that, that personal touch that it needs. Number three, relying too much on the label's marketing. I'm not 100% sure who's doing Sean's marketing, but based on his deal, it looks like it's Rock Nation, and Sean seems to lean heavily on Rock Nation's marketing team, led by Jay-Z's cousin, Bryant Biggs. But Rock Nation handles a lot of artists, and Big Sean needs his own dedicated marketing team, people who deeply understand his audience and their needs. Look at Kendrick Lamar with Day Free, or even Drake with Oliver and Future. They built teams around them that live and breathe their brand. Sean needs a similar setup. Actually, all artists need a similar setup. And this is one of the main reasons why I created this series, is to teach artists that their brands are businesses, and every business has its own marketing team. Number four, lacking community engagement. In today's music industry, having a strong Dedicated community is everything. Not many artists are tapping into this, but it is the next wave. Some people are doing it pretty well. You got Tory Lanez, he's releasing music directly to his fan base umbrellas on Twitter. And La Russell, he has a database of his audience. He's even doing intimate shows in the backyard. Yet, Sean's only community call to action is a basic newsletter for updates, and that's outdated. His fans need something more engaging a reason to join and stay connected with them. He could have easily leveraged the release of that short film, Clarity, to build an exclusive community, giving his base something special that they can share and promote themselves. We see that with Drake with the 100 gigs on your head top. 
Think about how Travis Scott created hype with Circus Maximus, and it was only released at the movie theater. And people want what they can't easily access. Sean got to step it up when it comes to the community. And finally, poor timing. The timing of the Better Me Than You release couldn't have been worse. Right after Sean dropped his short film, Clarity, Kendrick ignited the long-awaited Drake beef. This is the biggest beef since Jay-Z and Nas and Biggie and Tupac of our time. And Sean's release got lost in all the noise. His album theme of clarity, mental health, and self-love might have resonated more if it had come at a quieter time. Someone should have paused the rollout until it was a better time like right now. And here's a quick timeline recap. At the start, Big Sean, he started teasing the album with the Clarity trailer and released the single Precision, aiming to generate buzz. But then right after that, it gets overshadowed by the whole hip hop industry from J. Cole apologizing, Drake releasing push-ups, the back and forth, all of the blogs were talking about that. And this feud literally took up all of the marketing and the attention of the hip hop audience. And then the album prematurely leaks. He gets into a public beef with Kanye West, and this leads to an improv rushed promotion strategy, including just abruptly releasing the trailer and several interviews. Then August 30th, he drops the album, but it struggles to gain traction amidst the ongoing feuds and distractions. So what should Sean do now? Big Sean can still win, but first, not just him, but we all have to stop measuring the success of artists by their first week sales. The focus should be on long-term growth. Sean could start by broadening his exposure. He loves anime. He says this in his interview with Charlemagne. So why not collaborate more with RDC World? He should be doing comedy skits with them, not just having them in a music video. He could even produce the first hip hop themed anime. That's an amazing idea for him. Shows him as an entrepreneur, shows him creative outside of the hip hop space. And if that's something that you really want to make happen, hit me up. I'll connect you with 50 and we can make that happen. Another angle, tap into the spiritual space. Sean's all about mental health. So performing at events like a Tony Robbins seminar or collaborating with wellness brands could have positioned him differently. Think about how Jonah Hill's documentary Stutz on Netflix explored therapy and mental health. Sean could do something similar, blending his music and message in a broader cultural conversation. The interview he did with Charlemagne was packed with gems. He could have easily turned that into a documentary. It was very powerful. If you had not checked it out yet, make sure you go check it out. He spoke about his Adderall addiction, how he was suffering from depression, his music journey, how his mother's support influenced and impacted his success, and so much more. So while Better Me Than You didn't explode in its first week, Big Sean has plenty of time and opportunity to turn things around. It's not just about the music anymore. It's about the movement behind the music. Now, that's a wrap on the launch of Big Sean's album on this episode of Behind the Music Moves, where we dissect the moves that make or break the music. If you found this insightful, don't forget to hit the like button and drop a comment. And if you're curious about any other artist's marketing playbook, let me know as well. And tag Big Sean, Def Jam, and Rock Nation to keep the strategy wheel turning. Until next time, keep moving the music. It's your man, Clint. Peace.